Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Now today we've got a couple of uh, single malt scotches to take a look at. Heavy hitters. Matter of fact, um, one of my good friends that let me borrow these bottles to do this review, he said he loves, you know, old school Gretzky face-off type tasting. So that's what I'm going to do right here. I don't know if they're quite Gretzky good, but we're going to see. I mean, we have the Talisker 8 from 2021 coming in at 59.7% ABV retail pricing 125 150 somewhere in there it's not super cheap for an eight-year-old uh, then we have Lafroy cast strength batch 13 uh, this one is 57.9% ABV retail price about 80 90 dollars somewhere in there so a little less but we're gonna see what the difference is I can tell by the color Looking at the Lafroy, there has to be some sherry cask influence there. To where is the Tasker? It looks pure ex bourbon barrel maturation. As a matter of fact, I think on the front it says something about, you know, gathered from the smokiest Tasker casks. Okay, we're going to see. I do have a Karen Craft lid, and I'm not sponsored by Karen Craft, I'm just telling you what the lid is. It's a Karen Craft uh, glass lid that has the silicone on it on the Lafroy because it is so pungent it was already filling up the room I'm like I gotta cap this or I'm gonna start getting that peat in the Talisker and the Talisker is gonna be definitely more delicate as far as the peat smoke I think so that's why I have that lid okay all right so again price point 125 150 for the Talisker 8 let's see what it's like on the nose mm, okay all right, honey malt banana chips. Little twinge of like a caramelized, drizzled, kind of a nutty toffee. Ooh, right there. Little hint of mint, maybe wintergreen. Light cinnamon. Underripe pineapple, maybe. And the smoke is a little barbecuey, but it's pretty clean. And what my what I mean by that is it's just a little meat smoke, but it's not heavy. It's not like sooty or creosote or any anything really heavy on the peat front. That's about all I get there. I'm going to go ahead and taste this one as well before I get to the Lafroy, because I know if I pull that glass to even knows it, it's going to just take over. So here we go. 59.7% 8-year-old Talisker on the palate. Mm. Mm, that's good. Malty. Which it should be, but I mean by malty is, it almost had a reminiscent character of like malt uh, vinegar. Not the vinegar so much, but you know how that malt vinegar just has that really heavy malt. It had that. Alright. Try this. Here we go. Mm. Mouth coating. Oily. Medium heavy viscosity. For an eight-year-old, that's impressive. Of course, it's got all that ABV behind it, all those oils still left in it. Oof. Develops. Those banana chips that I was picking up, they do show up pretty early. But as it transitions and it rolls over the top, when it talks about the smokiest uh, Talisker casks, I mean, it's, got a little, it's got a little oomph there on the smoke. But let's see if we can run it through. honey smoke up front almost immediately you're hit with that that smoke but it's honey malt graham crackers then you get that nice little clean peat smoke starts getting a little meaty as it lingers underneath that you do get a little bit of the banana chips but it's definitely more on the honey malt aspect of things a little bit of a golden baked golden apples baked golden apples Real subtle um, lemon oil, but it's almost like a lim light lemon icing. Let's say it like that. You know how you get a little bit of the lemon, but it's not it's not citric. It's not acid driven. 
that's kind of what I'm getting here. Wow, the barbecue smoke is still rolling, still getting it. It gets heavier. It's almost like that, you know, the train smoke coming from a long way, and then it's here, and it's, yeah, that's what this does. Overall, I like that kind of, I don't know, it's kind of it's like honey grams, honey graham cracker, right? That's definitely in there. That banana chip, the baked apples, cinnamon is in here, but it's 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 restrained given the ABV. Not a ton of wood uh, at eight years old. I mean, there's a little bit of wood tannin, but it's not a lot. It's not enough to go, you know. Oh, that's a big heavy oak, or that's nice rich oak. It's not like that. It's, this is very young Talisker. Now, do you get that kind of briny? almost seaweedish vibe going a little bit but it's actually late and it's actually laying underneath the barbecue smoke the typical talisker white pepper tone in here again layering underneath the smoke so i do think they did a good job and then the 2021 release of picking some pretty you know smoke driven casks 59.7 percent abv it's big it's bolstered at 125 price point, I'm fine with that. 150, mm, it's getting close, but I think I'd still pull the trigger on it if I could find it at 150. So keep an eye out. 2021 Talisker eight-year-old, a great, um, heavily, I would say, kind of more heavily peated Talisker than we're used to seeing, uh, without being overbearing or. Um, abusive as some Isla whiskeys can tend to be which we're gonna go to right now so I have my water here and we're gonna do a double rinse actually on this one before going to the Lafroy cast strength batch 13 I'll be honest I've tasted a lot of the batches throughout um, but I've never really reviewed them uh, some slightly better than others uh, none going back to these old, you know, green stripe, red stripe, Lafroy cast strengths, or even the early batches like batch three. Batch four was really good. Batch three was awesome. Okay, but here we are. Ten batches later, batch 13. Here we go with the lid. Oh, nice. Okay. Wow, I was almost getting a little shaved coconut. Smoked shaved coconut. Dried fruits. So think uh, figs, dates, a lot of dates. Maybe a little golden raisin. A little plumminess going on. As a matter of fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reset here. Lightly blow it out. Give it a little swirl. Okay, it's actually doing better. I'll be honest. So, my buddy and I, we actually cracked this bottle together. And it was it was pretty aggressive right out the gate. It's really calming down now. It's doing good things. Smoky, peaty, it's still there. It's got a little bit of the ashiness going on. But it is pretty jammy. The, the sherry tones that are in here pretty jammy they're kind of helping balance it out at least on the nose a little bit of the typical you know Lafroy iodine the little medicinal tones that's in there brine a little bit it's a definitely a big vanilla tone going throughout kind of goes back to that smoked coconut vanilla that those three things are really coming out now I actually like it all right it was it's unexpected, I should say. I always like Lefroy cast strength. Sometimes they're a little again, a little aggressive, but this one's pretty nice. Let's see if it holds true on the palate. Mm. Wow. It's yeah. It's good. It's it's transitioning. It's changing in this bottle. 
and this has been opened I would say two weeks since we cracked it and already it's coming around lots of dark chocolate bitter dark chocolate walnuts lingering on the finish tobacco leaves on the back end all that was that wasn't there when we first cracked it it was very medicinal very iodine heavy band-aids but now we're getting like espresso coffee beans on the back end again that tobacco leather older leather tones Boy, let's see if I can piece this together this thing has gotten complex I still get that sh shaved coconut vanilla smoke little brine cinnamon's popping the smoke is feeling fairly clean not meaty like this one was necessarily on the nose but Lafroig has been doing those really good sherry releases recently the px uh, carches and then you did the the sherry oak tin so they have some good sherry oak you know sherried whiskeys to work with they're definitely putting a little bit in this 13 and it's a good balance i like the balance of the fruit the smoke the herbaceousness almost on the mid palate and what i mean by that is it's almost kind of like you get a little bit of the the brine the iodine the medicinal characters but it almost starts trickling over into like a, oh i would fresh peat right moss that kind of grassy vibe almost on that mid palate and it almost plays directly in between when you're getting up front where is the the dried sherry tones up front and the coconut type thing from the wood and then on the back end you're getting that kind of meat it's starting to get a little meaty on the back end but it's more of a clean pure peat smoke rushing on the back end gets a little ashy very late but that's about the time when you're getting that real bitter dark chocolate that walnut characteristic coming in old leather again lingering on the on the palate it's like a almost like a when you're if you're a cigar smoker if you're if you've had cigars think maduro wrappers that kind of really earthy heavier darker chocolate tones that's what I'm getting on this one on the back end. This actually probably would go great if you're in that type of situation. This is probably going to hold up really nicely, even at 57.9%. Plenty of oomph to hold through. And now that it's opened up, I mean, it has really calmed down that iodine and that Band-Aid type thing that was initially happening. I mean... $90, it's a buy. Now, the one thing I'll say about Batch 13, when I think back to Batch 3, when I think back to the old Red Stripe um, cast strength, which, I, yeah, I do have those right there. I might pull those down for a patron bonus footage. Um, this is definitely kind of that newer... So, you know how Lefroy, it, it got... Um, when it came from those, they got a little more heavy-handed on the iodine. So they got medicinal, they got really bold flavors for many years there. Now I'm starting to see them coming around where they're focusing a little more on the sherried aspect. They're trying to sweeten it up to help balance that. And I think we're seeing some really good things. Now, is it as soft as the really old ones? No. Those old ones were just soft, round, very enjoyable, even at higher ABVs. But we're getting close now. So... Batch 13 to me is definitely a really nice pickup if you see it out there for about $90. This 2021 Talisker 8, bigger ABV, doesn't fear, feel nearly as heavy as this Lefroy. This Lefroy has a lot of flavor going on. This is more pure Talisker, pure malt. As far as the, you know, the honey, the malt, the graham cracker type element, the little banana chips and the, and the golden apples baked. This is beautiful. They're two different animals, I guess, kind of as were Gretzky and Lemieux, right? So, um, maybe he had a little point there.
But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video review. Uh, thank you all for joining me on Patreon or YouTube. Of course, on Patreon, you're going to get these videos two weeks early, so you can get out there and find these bottles quicker, and you get them ad-free. So join me over at patreon.com slash liquorhound for that. And of course, like I said, I do bonus footage, which I'm about to pull down those two old Lefroy cast strengths, and we're going to see how they compare directly to this one. Anyway, thank you as always. Have a great day, and cheers.